Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to call this meeting to order at 401. And Jackie, are you on? No, it's me today. It's you. Where's Jackie? No, not, not that the, I, not, I'm not, I didn't want to. good enough. It was Sorry. disappointing <laughs> in my voice. <laughs> um, so Chris, if you could, could do roll call for me, please. Sure. Uh, committee member Toon. Here. Committee member Coleman. Here. Committee member Duez. Present. Uh, committee member Mansfield. I don't see her yet, but no. I expect her to be here. Uh, committee member Morales. He's in the oh, mess. Not in, right? And then council member Such. I'm here. Um, And, okay. All right. So welcome everybody. Um, <clears throat> if so, I, I'd like, if you could approve the agenda, which is just a, uh, some discussion of definitions of important words that you have been used throughout our work here um, and unfinished business um, working on the resolution. Those are the two agenda items today. If I could get, if I could get approval, please. I move to approve the agenda. Thank you. Thanks, Mercedes. Second? I will second. Thanks, Darren. Okay, so I'm going to open up to public comments. Um, your comments must be um, limited to topics not on the agenda, and they should be related to something that's within the purview of this um, committee. Um, and you have three minutes. And if you could please raise your hand. And I also get this mixed up. I think it's star six to raise your hand and star nine to star nine to raise your hand and oh, star six to I do it all the time. I should always write that. Star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute yourself. Correct. Sorry. Oh, Bob Kirk. I know that face. Hi, Bob Kirk. Very good. Thank you. Um, at the last city council meeting, it was interesting that some people were shocked that not everyone was on board with the social equity committee. Why would that be? In listening to these meetings, I have observed attacks on our constitution and attempts to rewrite history. I've heard baseless assertions that our constitution was not based on Judeo-Christian principles. I've heard outright attacks on our constitution by inference that because some of the founders were slave owners, Therefore, the Constitution is fundamentally bad. These assertions and inferences ignore thousands of years of history. Slavery is an ancient institution. The United States has been a world leader in eliminating it, notably with the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Emancipation Proclamation. Tell me, please, if the US Constitution is so bad, why does the rest of the world want to come here? Tell me, please, if the Constitution is so bad, why do you want, what do you want to replace it with? Maybe socialism, maybe communism, or maybe Marxism. I'm sorry, but they have been tried and failed miserably. Just take a, take a look at places like Russia, China, and Cuba. My friends in Europe are shaking their heads at us here in America because we want to be socialists like Europe, but they tell me that socialism is not working there. They prefer our system. In these meetings, I've heard about complicity. I'd like to point out that civil servants in these, in these meetings who have sworn to protect and, and defend the Constitution have remained silent. Does this make them complicit in the attacks on the Constitution? I'd also like to point out that slavery is alive and unfortunately well in the US but we've relabeled it with the more innocuous name of human trafficking. How is it that human trafficking is not called out by the Social Equity Committee? These attacks on the US Constitution and attempts to rewrite history might be some of the reasons why not everyone is on board with the Social Equity Committee. Some things to think about anyway. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Anyone else? Uh, 
Hello. Hi, this is Sharlyn Anderson. Can Hi, Sharlyn. You can you can you you may speak. You are mute. Yeah, she muted herself. Okay. There you go. Um, I just wanted to say that I was there uh, last Tuesday night and I heard a few things um, that were that were said that people have come here or people that grew up here were um, bullied or not treated nicely. And I've been up here my whole life and I was bullied and I wasn't treated nicely, but that happened to just about 99% of the people that live here in school and high school. Now we have these um, mask requirements and all of these other things that have been thrown at us and people are in worse shape than they've ever been. And I do believe that it has happened along with the Black Lives Matter, Antifa, social justice, social equity, all of those things are meant to divide us and make us all fight and hate each other. And I've never, ever, ever felt that in this community. And I also wanted to defend our police officers here. Um, I've never, ever, ever heard of any police officer being mean to just one kind of person or anything. They are loving, wonderful men that work, they have families here and they go to church with us. Um, so I, I defend that too. I also remember hearing defending the police because they're evil and bad. All of those kind of things are wrong. The constitution defines all of these things and changing it, like Bob said, or trying to burn it down and rebuild, those things are not, they're not good. And I know in my heart, I am very, very Christian. And I, I know in my heart that this is, this is meant to come and it's meant to destroy and beat people down so that when we get pulled into communism, you know, we don't have a word to say about it. And I'm tired of the censorship. I'm tired of people in small counties like this. We get censored, we get outvoted because there's there's not more of us, but I don't believe that any kind of social equity meeting up here is gonna help this county. I think it's gonna make it worse and I'm done. Thanks. <clears throat> Anybody else wish to speak? Okay. I think that's a record. Yeah, it is. All right. So um, there just has been a lot of, I'm, I'm moving on to our first agenda item. Um, discussion, discuss the definitions of important words used throughout the social equity committee's draft resolution and also, but not just um, in the resolution, but also um, it just in our conversations so that we're not, so that, that people, so that we all know what, what we're, um, what our definition of that word is and, and agree upon that definition. And that's really what this period is. Uh, Sherilyn, may I just ask you a, a question very kindly, if you could quit rocking, cause actually it's making me sick to my stomach. <laughs> I'm me sorry, too. I <laughs> I'm, I'm a wimp about it. I, <laughs> Sorry, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Anyhow, just so that we agree on on, on the definition of the definition of the words we're using, um, because it's not always clear. Um, I, <clears throat> there are two think attachments in your um, in the agenda to, in the packet today. One is um, definitions from the University of Washington's. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion committee at, at, f through their their school of public health, because um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is considered a public health issue um, these days. So, um, and I just sort of picked out the ones, and they're not. It's this. This is a group discussion. They're the ones that I just wanted to make sure that we could find agreement on. Um, and also, um, Melissa Eads, our city administrator, gave me a, a, um, a, another list of definitions, and it was um, the ICMA, which is the, Melissa, you're going to, I should have checked with this. It's, it's like the body that, um, you know, there's a, a, week, a monthly journal for city administrators, and, it's, and so it's more government focused, and those are also helpful. Um, 
because they're, and, and, and the two definitions aren't in conflict, but the ICMA definitions are focused on government definitions, government interpretations of those words. So um, there's a list um, in your packet if you scroll down from the agenda and um, the list is bias, discrimination, diversity, equality, equity, ethnicity, gender, implicit bias, institutional racism, oppression, overt racism, prejudice, race, racial justice, racism, structural racism and white supremacy culture. So <clears throat> you probably haven't had a, a lot of time to review those. Those just um, came out. I think. Uh, Colette, just to confirm, the, these words and definitions you're talking about are separate from the University of Washington definition packet, is that right? Well, they're, they're the Washington University of Washington, if you scroll down, it's all there and the um, ICM, ICMA definitions mm -hmm. um, are just a link that you can sign on to. I have a quick question. Oh. I, go ahead, Mercedes. Thank you. Full time. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. So um, I know that over the several months we have been talking um, about some of those concepts in different ways, right? And so I am very happy that we are looking at those definitions. And I also, I would invite everyone to look at the glossary that we made at the very beginning of, the, of our work that still in the website place. And also, um, I would like to say that during the workshop, that was offered by the equity committee. Also, it was with the intention to build a common language, not only for the equity committee, but for the community. And in saying that, I would like to refer to um, the quotation that I have, I mentioned one time and has been mentioned several times after that, of that all men are created equal, which was part of the Declaration of Independence in 1776. And, and we have talked about that, right? That the context, why context is important. Who were all men in 1776? were no women, no people of color, no black, no slaves, right? And because we live in a democracy and because it is an imperfect democracy, which is good. I mean, we all love our democracy, right? But then 100 years later, after the Declaration of Independence in 1865, it was necessary to make the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. But then 200, 100 years later in 1964, it was necessary to create the Civil Rights Act. And every year, and over the years, it has been necessary to make amendments, to make corrections, to create, just to enhance the intention of the Constitution and of the Declaration of Independence. So nobody in the Social Equity Committee is against any of that, or the opposite. We are pro pro-democracy, we are pro our constitution. And I think I am saying this because in reviewing our definitions of several concepts like bias, racism, anti-racism, implicit bias, systemic, etc., what we are aiming is to get a community common language to really value our democracy, to really value our freedom. 
And I'm sorry, it seems like today I feel like rambling, uh, but I wanted to say that. That, that was important, Mercedes. I, it, it wasn't rambling. Um, I, I have a quick question on that. So the definitions that are attached here were some type of committee. So are we going to do the definitions off interpretations off of Webster's dictionary definitions or other sources? How are we going to keep that so that the communities all together on those topics? Are we using those ones that are coming from the university? Are we creating our own? Is there the other one that you just said, that other source? I didn't catch the name of it. Or, in, or interpretation of what these mean to each individual, because you ask 50 people, they get 50 different answers. Shall um, we show the visuals to show the definition? So we all go over the definitions together. Well, my question more is, is these definitions from the college that came in, are they a group that got together that's not exactly the same as Webster's dictionary definitions? Or is there some that just don't have a, a set definition that we're going to define? Because the people tuning in, you know, probably yes. didn't see the whole packet read through. And it'd be nice to have them all involved and in seeing what we're doing. Yeah, so so I can answer that. The the um, definitions from the University of California um, are through their School of Public Health and Epidemiology. So they're 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 <clears throat> standard definitions for that. And they're all if you look at that list, and I don't expect people to read all this stuff, but they're all footnoted, so you can see how they came up with that definition. And that's what I liked about that list of definitions. It's not. It's not my opinion, and in fact, <clears throat> um, yeah, it's not my opinion. It is, you know, sort of an established school of public. It's, it's sort of like the opinion of a medical term, you know, the, and it's, but it's established by the school of public health, because, um, as I said earlier, this is actually considered a public health issue. Um, <clears throat> the other one, the ICMA, which is the one that um, Ms. Leeds um, included, I think is very, very interesting. I, and and I, I read a lot of those definitions and they weren't contradicting each other. It's just the ones from ICMA are more directed towards a government entity. Um, and, and so is help, I think is helpful. Um, that's all. The <clears throat> ICMA, and I think you guys, I think, yeah. The, it's, there's a lot of work on racial equity going on in uh, League of Cities and ICMA. Um, the, this two, the, the two bodies that sort of, that, that we as city elected officials and city staff turn to for help about how to, how to move forward. You know, I get you. I just wanted to make sure that they kind of were a standard definition so that everybody, when we start talking about them, if they're not on there, it's, you know, not a, a Google fest and not a ask a million questions kind of things. Yeah, and I, I will <clears throat> ask Melissa, well, first I think we should sort of review them a little bit as a group, not, and we're probably not gonna take the whole time to do that, but, and I'll get you in just a second, Nikki, I saw you. Um, and perhaps they can be put on the website, just like our glossary of terms, and, and maybe at some point I'll, I'll kind of combine so we're not, we don't have three different places to go to. Nikki. Um, I do have um, kind of all of the tabs up of our packet and the ICMA article. If you wanted me to share my screen so we have a visual, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. I don't know if it's now, but. Um, sure, I mean, I, I think always there's a visual is better. <clears throat> um, I don't know how. To, does Chris do that? Does Chris allow you to share your screen? Um, I think Chris just needs to make me a host and then I can share my screen and have the packet up or whatever yeah, we're talking yes about. Prompt and you, you should be yeah, co-host. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. And I am glad because I will be able to pay attention <laughs> and I don't have to share my screen this time. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki, for offering. Of course. Your time may come later in the meeting though, Mercedes. Maybe not. <clears throat> okay. So 
the definitions start on this page. Right. Um, and then the link you were talking about, Colette, was this one here for. Right. Is that right? Yes. I, um, I only see definitions on the ICMA article for diversity, inclusion, belonging. I didn't see the other ones that you mentioned, but maybe Can you scroll down a little bit more. But there were there were many more. Um, huh. We want to tackle these off the list that we created to go over so that we can move to each one instead of you know, 30 of us trying to read at different speeds. Okay, so yeah. go back to that uh, for the moment, Nikki. ICMA or diversity. Yeah, so I think that what is important about these, like you mentioned, Colette, is that these are definitions about equity for local government. And it is happening all over the nation. So I think this is important to see what they said. Yes, I do as well. And, 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 and I've read other articles about ICMA as well, so that it's just kind of on the same, uh, yeah. uh, I guess, level as to a lot of the discussion we have on this platform. And of course, there there is a lot of talk about the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. And just to echo and to speak to Mercedes' point um, about the Declaration of Independence, um, I think it's important to... Um, really look at the time that that was written and also who it was written by. And so as a person of color or as, as a woman, um, we have, uh, it's hard not to feel a little bit left out, right? And so just, just to put yourself, I guess, let's be a little empathetic. Um, but for me, that, that document was written with no mention of women, no mention of Native Americans and slaves were counted as three fifths of a person. No, so they were not. They were not people. The three fifths came later. They were not considered people. Okay, so um, either either or. I think the the point is just that um, not. Um, every person, I guess, in the United States for different, um, mm -hmm. in different races and different, and as women, um, if you can kind of see where we're coming from, it, it would be easy uh, for us to feel excluded. So just something to ponder. Thank you, Nikki. And mm -hmm. in that for the definition, I think it's important to say, to read, it's Say the principle of equity acknowledge that there are historically underserved and underrepresented populations. Addressing these unbalanced conditions is required to ensure the provision of adequate opportunity to all groups. However, it is hard for me to explain equity without including the concept of diversity, inclusion, and belonging. These concepts complete the full participation requirement of the equity definition. Okay, so um, diversity refers to the representation of different demographic groups with a range of differences, both seen and unseen. That's a really important distinction that make people unique. This asks the question who is in the room to receive this equitable treatment. While there are often underrepresented groups, there's also often an overrepresented group in the room. Um, and I think for a government entity, that's, I mean, I think that that's important for all of us, but but it's I think it's and this is actually what I love about this country that governments are talking about this, you know. Exactly. I mean, I I I I know that the Constitution was flawed and the Declaration of Independence was flawed, but then and the Thirteenth Amendment, frankly, was thought flawed. But 
but that there's been an evolution and always a striving, um, I think, to make things better. Yeah. Um, exactly. It, it, in, in, in the 18th century, it was an extraordinary job that was done, but it's not enough. Civil Rights Act in 1964 was an ex extraordinary piece of legislation, but we learned, we learned that it wasn't enough. Exactly. So that's, that's the reason for this. Um, so, you know, that is diversity. The um, definition from the University of Washington is, and we're not gonna read all of these definitions twice, but the myriad ways in which people differ, including the psychological, physical, cognitive, and social differences that occur among all individuals, such as race, ethnicity, nationality, socioeconomic status, mental, and physical ability and learning styles. Can you move to that, Nikki, please? Exactly. Can you show that? It's in the agenda packet. It's, it's in the package. It's the other one. Yeah, that it's, one. And it's pretty, diversity is pretty high up. They're all in alphabetical. Go to the page. Nine. There you go. You've got it. Yeah. Um, diversity is, is all inclusive and supportive of the pr proposition that everyone and every group should be valued. It is about understanding these differences and moving beyond simple tolerance to embracing and celebrating the rich dimensions of our differences. I like that definition of diversity. Um, be, you know, I like that we, that it's about understanding these differences and moving beyond simple tolerance. Right. To embrace. Lisa and just logged in. What? Lisa. Lisa's here. I think, Lisa. too, I mean, I like this definition, um, but I think one thing that's important that the ICMA touched on um, as well in their definition of diversity is, is representation, mm -hmm. which, which is so important. Um, and I think I've had this conversation often with um, my with friends who are white is just the representation that's taken for granted. Um, I remember when um, Deb Haland, Deb Haland, I don't say, I don't know how to say her name properly, but when she was confirmed as the first Native American Interior Secretary, having that representation for Indigenous little girls and to, to, to just have that representation and see that diversity is so inspiring. So I do like the talk about representation within diversity. I think it's really important. Yeah. I yeah, agree. that is about the inclusion, right? So diversity tell us what are those groups that are not visible. So some people think that diversity means something different. And so in the in the definition that we not the definition, but in the text that we read before, they, they talk about diversity, inclusion, and equality. How to get the full participation, the three things need to be present, right? So you are right, Nikki, representation is very important. And why we celebrate like the first Native American or the first black woman that occupies something because it has been usually a space only for men. Right. <clears throat> the other thing that I liked about this one, Darren, is that it actually is, sort of mimics your whereas, one of your whereas statements that's in the resolution. So I sort of liked that. So anyhow, okay. So what, Nikki, what's the next one on ICMA? Is. I know this is hard to scroll back and forth. Okay, inclusion. It's inclusion, okay. Inclusion refers to the action of creating an environment that engages, respects, and values multiple perspectives, ideas, and individuals. This asks the question, are those new folks in the room respected and engaged? Are their perspectives valued? If the answers to these questions are no, then why are they even in the room? Right. You know what's so lovely about this of ICMA 
is that it's the roadmap to equity in government. Exactly. It's totally the roadmap to equity in government, which, you know, is, is lovely. Yeah. So in, in talking about the inclusion, right, someone can be like, let's say here in the committee, but do we all have all our voices have the same weight? And I think that in that regard, we have been doing a really good job about listening to the different point of view, to the different perspectives, listening to the public comments and bringing those ideas forward. Yeah, and it's, it's where, and I, I don't remember who led this, it, it may have been you, Mercedes, I don't remember, but that it's all about learning how to have these conversations. It's not about winning the argument. It's about learning how to have these conversations in a civil way, knowing that we will not always agree, but but that doesn't mean we have to fight. But anyhow, okay. Um, Let's go. And so I think equity is probably the next one on there. Um, we just did the inclusion for ICMA. So I don't know if you wanted to point out the University of Washington definition, but their inclusion definition, authentically bringing traditionally excluded individuals and our groups into processes, activities, and decision policymaking in a way that shares power. That's pretty good. Too. That's a pretty powerful one too, and it, it also mm -hmm. it, it's yeah it's about the same. It's, it's yeah you know, speaking the same language. Or... So not only bringing people in, but having decision making, saying yeah. into policies and power, right? Right, and not so much. I can't remember who. Who, uh, who said this, but in talking about specifically sharing power and equity, it's as a woman or as a person of color or as insert any marginalized here, um, it's, I'm not asking you to um, give your seat at the table to me. I'm asking you to also bring a seat for me and share that. Um, it's not about giving up the seat, right? It's, right. it's the sharing. The yeah. sharing of power, I think, is, is important in that last definition. And really, it's not even asking for someone to bring the, tape, the chair to us, but it's just about realizing that the table is big enough for each of us to have a seat at the table. Right. It's not a replacement, it's an addition. Right. Okay, belonging. <clears throat> um, inclusion and belonging, I'm really embarrassed we're not on the list that I pulled out. So um, this is helpful. Um, belonging is the feeling of security and support when there is a sense of acceptance, inclusion, and identity for an individual within a group. When all three are present, diversity, equity, and inclusion, your organization exhibits high levels of belonging. Good. That's kind of what we were talking about, about people not feeling included just on every day-to-day -day life. You know, the organization is the community that we're talking about. And I know that a lot of people definitely don't feel included on a lot of different topics. That'd be something to think about how we start to. How to broaden that. Um, Where do you want me to go from here? Um, um, I think the next definition is um, equity, is it not? Or does it just end at belonging? Does this link end at belonging? I thought it had a whole lot more on it here. Um, if I have the same, the correct link, uh, I think you do. This was the link in the packet. 
Let me just open it again real quick. Here, wait, now I have it up already. Equity ensures that individuals are provided the resources they need to have access to the same opportunities as the general population. While equity represents impartiality, i.e. the distribution is made in such a way to even opportunities for all the people. Conversely, equality indicates uniformi uniformity where everything is evenly distributed among people. Am I so messed this up? Is, this Did is Mercedes the break up or was that me? I'm, I'm sorry. You guys hear me? Yeah. Well, what was uh, your question? Was that Mercedes mic that broke up when she was reading that definition or was it my computer? Um, I don't think her mic broke up. I heard her. Okay. I heard Mercedes. So this is the link that I clicked on, Colette, the one right here underneath the list. And that took me here, but I don't see any more. Hmm. Um, Mercedes, what were you reading from? Mm -hmm. uh, I was reading from the packet. Uh, is the uh, the one on the University of Washington? Yeah, the University of Washington. It is the page page nine. Oh no, that. page ten. No. I think it's the one that I yeah. got. Okay. <clears throat> Let's read equality. I think that's just right above equity, maybe. Yeah. Let's read equality just to have equality is the condition under which every individual is treated in the same way and is granted the same rights and responsibilities regardless of their individual differences. So it's not that we don't believe in equality, it's that equality in itself isn't enough. Um, yeah. And one example that I can think of right now is like, if there would be somebody that is deaf right now, trying to participate in this meeting. And because we don't have a signing language interpreter, that person would not be able to participate because he or she would not know what we are saying. Right. Right. Okay. Um, let's go down and, and now we're just going to stay on this document because the other document doesn't, doesn't go beyond, um, I think belonging is the end. Um, so let's, let, uh, it, it, there are certain things that I think we need to talk about. One is implicit bias. If we could scroll down to that because there, that is, that's always, yeah, Negative sort of, associations expressed automatically that people unknowingly hold, also known as unconscious or hidden bias. Many studies have indicated that implicit biases affect individuals' attitudes and actions, thus creating real world implications, even though individuals may not even be aware that those biases exist within themselves. Notably, implicit biases have been shown to be favored above individual stated commitments to equality and fairness, thereby producing behavior that diverges from the explicit attitudes that people may profess. Good. And how about institutional racism? Because that's a big, um, you know, I mean, these are just things that we've been talking about and I think it's just important to re review them. Um, anyone want to read that? I mean, I can. Institutional race. 
Racism refers specifically to the ways in which institutional policies and practices create different outcomes for different racial groups. The institutional policies may never mention any racial group, but their effect is to create advantages for whites and oppression and disadvantage for people from groups classified as people of color. Okay. Um, and this is where I think um, many people find difficult to understand why institutional racism exists. And I am thinking about one, one item that has been in the news lately, it refers to the death of Black newborns and also to the problems of uh, pregnancy for Black women. And there are statistics that show that that happened. So it can be treated like any other groups because there, there are particular issues affecting the Black population. So it's about looking at the policies and procedures that have created those outcomes. So, and once again, it is not about blaming, but it's about finding what is happening and how we can fix that in the same way that in 1964, the Civil Rights, Rights Act was created to advance democracy. Now we also need to look at those outcomes that are happening right now and to figure out how we are fixing that. Does anyone has another example about institutional racism? <clears throat> I, I, I think one sees that in schools, mm -hmm. our educational system, um, where um, <clears throat> kids of color are often um, um, treated more harshly for the same behavior as um, the white kid sitting next to him or her. Um, and I think it's completely, I, I, and I'm not calling anyone a racist here. I think it's, um, um, I, I think it's, un, I think it's unknown. I don't think we know that we do it, but we are <clears throat> just sort of wired to more, <clears throat> more easily identify with people who, who, with whom, with, who we look, who look the same as us. So, and I think that that's. All right, but when you said unknown, where well, I think that is where implicit bias come in. Institutional, I think what you're saying is like the two Texas or the, the two kids shooters where, you know, one got a hand slap and one got very, very, very big everything still in jail, $2 million bill. And it just shows that what you're talking about. I believe the kid that shot one kid got out or shot three kids. And I believe the other kid, you know, had a, a different outcome at the level of bail and things like that, where people get out and some people don't. Uh, I, I believe that the Texas one was the, the black kid brought a gun to school and shot three kids and he got let go on 90,000 bail. And the other kid uh, was a white kid who went to school and he's still in 2 million. He's the one that his parents bought him a gun underage, but that is the exact definition, I think, of what we're talking about here, correct? Great example, Joan. Yes. One example that's kind of fresh in my mind, just because there was a there was a presentation on this in one of my classes last night, is just our sort of historical practice of um, putting a lot of resources into um, missing, particularly missing women who are white, and the um, thousands of 
murdered and missing indigenous women and people of color who go missing and murdered every year that go untalked about. Mm -hmm. And so we know this exists because of all of the data, right? But when we see systems like all of these examples that are given, um, we know it happens We we are given all of the examples and statistics that we need. And so when we, when we talk about these examples and then, you know, sort of thinking about, I know a lot of um, our opposition to this work, um, we, we are called divisive because we, we want to bring light to these situations, right? But if we don't bring light to this situation and talk about it, and the alternative is just to kind of keep this sort of fundamentalist mindset, then mm -hmm. this entire group of people goes without getting any change and without getting any justice. And so um, I think a lot of that is the heart, you know, to have that gentle conversation is at the heart of a lot of the resistance. Um, but this, the statistics are there and the data is there. <clears throat> well, and the, the statistics and the data are here in, in our community. Right. Um, and, and I just, <clears throat> I, I often kind of shudder at the word, at, at the um, accusation that we're being divisive. It's just a different divide. But I think that people of color have been divided from, have been kept outside um, all along. So there's a, there's a, div, div, there's divisiveness already. This is just a, a different um, kind of lens into it, I think. Um, another, another thing, um, just an example of institutional racism is the uh, drug laws and um, mo most, and, and all of them, but specifically the laws um, of, cocaine versus crack cocaine. And mm -hmm. that crack cocaine was the drug um, of um, black communities and the uh, standard for imprisonment was much lower. And it mm -hmm. essentially filled our prisons. I mean, it robbed black communities of their fathers and their husbands and their sons and filled our prisons. Wasn't that um, a Joe and, Biden and, initiative? I'm sorry? Wasn't that a Joe Biden thing? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's, you know, Democrats are not without um, without guilt here. I mean, I, I just remember when that was all passing that um, I went to a party in Washington, D.C. Not It wasn't a party that I would ever be invited to, but my <laughs> sister's husband did business with the government. And um, so I and I happened to be there back east. And so I tag, got to tag along. And all you know, the senators who were writing that bill were all snorting cocaine at that party all night long. I mean, and writing bills that stripped black communities of their men. So I yeah. think that's institutional racism. So one one of the things about the culture, and you know, I have been hearing a lot lately that that because people are afraid of this, because people are afraid of that. So, and I wonder when people said, when people, no, let me reframe, let me reframe that. So when I hear all what we are saying, I only hear things about inclusion, about freedom, about democracy, about doing good things. So I can't relate to those that are against. I mean, I wish I would understand with more clarity what people are afraid of. If what we want is for all of us, all of, all of us to have the same opportunities. That's a very great question. I know that you put on that group of coming together. And I don't know what the name of that actual group is that we can, what is that name? We do at the library. Oh, Building Bridges. Building Perfect. Bridges. 
I think that'd be great for people to show up and you guys can discuss that kind of thing because literally we all live here. We all have to live here. We're all kids are going to grow up here. Coming, coming together and having some of that stuff is, is important, but you could get some of the questions of why people are so reluctant to support. Maybe, to be honest, it, it, me, let's, let's talk about me because it's a lot easier to do. I'm, I'm an a-hole most of the time. I'm just, that's the type of person I am. I'm funny and people find it condescending. Sometimes they go against me because of my attitude versus my vision. So that kind of thing may be something that maybe they just don't like someone in here. They don't like something about it. Maybe they're misinformed, but it'd be a good idea to have that conversation to where you can say, hey, what is the actual worry of why these people come in and comment for one side or another? What is the actual thing? So that might be a good way to figure some of that out. We got to hear from them. They're part of our community. Someone's at my door hanging. Elisa, I haven't heard from you. Hi. Hi. Sorry, it's been a long day. I'm kind of just trying to float. I'm, it's not a good day for me to speak. I apologize. It's okay. It's okay. I just wanted hmm. to acknowledge your presence. Thank you. Thank you for being here in spite of the long day and the tiredness. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so I think, so what I would like to ask of, of all of us is that we um, just look at these, these definitions, add to the list if they're, if they're I mean, I think you, you mentioned one Mercedes that is not on the list you have added, um, you mentioned anti-racist. Um, so just sort of think about the ones that you want clarified or um, that you think should be clarified. And um, we can talk about that um, at another, at the later meeting. Um, I'd like to open this now to public comment. And um, yeah, I'd like to open this to public comment, if I may. Is there anyone who would like to speak? about what we've been talking about. Um, Ingrid, your hand is up. Yes, um, thank you, Social Equity Committee. I don't speak often because I'm not always kind and I'm not always polite. Um, thank you for those definitions today. Just hearing those few, these few minutes talking about simple phrases that should be understood. And we have people like, Bob Kirk saying we don't need a social equity committee, the other woman who spoke, their denial and their fear of Antifa and BLM and communists and terrorists and anybody who is not exactly like them just shows why we need this committee. And um, after watching the last um, city council meeting, thank goodness I could break up and watch it because it was so painful. And anybody in this community who is not white, cisgender, Christian is not accepted by the Kirks, by the pastors on the school boards, by so many people in this community who continue to say, there's no issues, there's no problems. And um, just a fact, look at today. Just today, a bill was finally passed to make lynching a hate crime, just today. And there is still no federal protection for natural hair. There's so many issues that are still inherently racist, yet people in this community are just so afraid of anything slightly different. And I want to thank you again. <clears throat> Thanks, Ingrid. Um, um, a phone number ending in 5354. You're on. Wow. So we're all inclusive and stuff. Driving through town on Sunday, there was a week that I saw a guy who was uh, about 12, 15 feet south of Tristan, you know, at the courthouse square where people have their little religious gathering every Sunday. <clears throat> he had a flag. Next week, I see him again. Same thing, flag, standing there and a sign. Next week, I see him sitting in a chair further back, a little kind of bored. And then 
somebody says that the, the people in Courthouse Square are being harassed, which seemed kind of odd to me because all I'd seen was guy just standing there, just like the other people. Of course, he's not part of the cool kids, is he? He's not one of the people that is inclusive. He doesn't accept diversity. No, he has different ideas, so we have to deal with him. So we're all going to show up with our signs that talk about love. And I saw you there. Now, the person that brought it to your attention showed up at another rally previous to that, calling people words that rhyme with oh, itch, but starts with a B, MF, or said a lot of other things too. Swing his hand up in front of somebody's face, about an inch away with a single finger salute. Very inclusive of that person. That's who lets you know about that bad person in the park. So you're going to go ahead and talk all about hate and fear and blame other people. In the words of the great philosopher Michael Jackson, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. That'll be it for tonight, I think. Thanks. Ingrid, if I could ask you to lower your hand. Oh, yeah. Ingrid, if I could ask you to lower your hand, um, that would be great. Thanks. Um, Bob Kirk. Yeah, first of all, I just want to make sure it was okay if I spoke because I did speak uh, in the earlier yeah. time there. Before okay. it was on non agenda items, now it's, not, it's, it's related to this agenda item. So, all yeah, right. you can speak again. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, there was a couple of things that came up in the discussion today that I think um, shows some of the, uh, the concerns in the issue. Uh, there's a lot of things that, that people are very concerned about. For example, in the Indian uh, Native Indian community, what's been happening with women, that's extremely bad stuff. Um, there is, well, I don't know. They're under their own nation uh, rules, but certainly that sounds to me much more like a law enforcement thing. I've been aware of that for a number of years. It's, it's a horrible thing. Um, black childbirth issues, that's a serious issue. Um, but let's not forget that Planned Parenthood is usually in those neighborhoods and the numbers, the estimates mm -hmm. vary, but there have been an uh, enormous number of black children that have not seen the light of day because of that organization. Um, when it comes to so-called uh, what do people fear, I don't know if it's a fear, but I, I think it's more of a question. Um, in the discussion today, I heard a lot about equal starting for people, equal starting places. And that, to me, makes a, a ton of sense. That's about equality. When we come to equity, there's a sense that the outcomes have to be equal. And that is a challenge, I think, for a lot of people to, to deal with, because how do we guarantee that people who try hard um, end up at the same place as people that don't try hard? And this is not, you know, racial, ethnic, religious, anything. It's just, how do you make sure that everybody ends up with the same outcome? That's a real challenge. I think that's why the word social equity is hard for people to grasp. Because they're, they're wondering if we're just going to end up in a situation where we have equal, equal misery instead of um, equal starting. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Anyone else <clears throat> like to speak in public comment? Tristan. Uh, I think you're doing a shockingly good job. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. I, I think you're burdened a great deal though with the <coughs> inability to acknowledge the history of uh, Sonora, where, where it came from and what happened to the natives that were here before uh, and how the Mexican miners that were here before, to, how they got bumped out and how the Chinese got bumped out. And, uh, that's that that history is uh, the history 
of, of this community. And I think if, if it was just voiced, articulated constantly, then it, I think still our history builds, the history we have recorded builds upon that, but the other history, the hidden history exists as well. The fact that there was a, a genocide and for several decades, there were scout bounties against the natives. That exists, it's just a physical reality. I, I hope we could deal with that more, I just come to address it. Thanks, Tristan. Okay. Um, Sherilyn, you, you had your hand up. You need to unmute. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I understand what, what you guys are talking about. I understand that it's a problem, but I don't think it's a government problem. I think it's a people problem. Um, first, I heard you guys talking about how the Constitution was good, and then I heard you attacking the Constitution um, for not having certain things in it, but the past was the past. We can't help what the past did. We're not like that anymore, and I do remember Martin Luther King saying that we, and he was a Christian man, and he did believe in God, and he also said that we are to judge each other by our character, not by our color. And I, I just think that if people were to have listened to him back then, then maybe this wouldn't be such a problem. And I, I'm gonna go, cause I can't, I, I, that we got name called by Ingrid. That's, that's not why we should be here. Okay, I didn't call anybody names or talk bad to anyone here, but I got talked to bad. Thank you. Thanks, Sherilyn. Um, Steve Opie, and then I'm going to end public comment because we still need to, to do committee reports and it's after five. So, Steve, hello. Yes, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm driving. I got you guys on my Bluetooth right now. So, if you hear my daughter yelling, very sorry. It's okay. But, um, I, I'm just, uh, I, I got on late, so I missed all the, uh, you know, definitions and whatnot. But I did hear uh, pub, the opening of public comment. And I heard somebody calling out somebody else talking about how because, you know, we don't agree um, with each other, um, that basically the other side's wrong. And I don't, I don't think that at all. I do think that there is a happy middle ground. But um, the problem I have is I've heard it during the uh, city council meeting and at multiple uh, social equity meetings. I've only been on, you know, figure three or four of these. But um, every time I'm on it, and if you disagree with something, um, then you're just shunned out. And they, oh, we need to be inclusive. But, you know, we, we don't like you because... Your connection is getting uh, tough, Steve. Uh, you think that you're not racist, I'm trying to say that we're all, all racist up here, but oh, sorry about that. Is, is it better? Sorry, can you hear me? I should, it should yes. be better. Anyways, um, basically, the problem I have is, is, is that people are basically saying, oh, we're not trying to say that you're racist. Um, but the biggest problem that you guys have had is white supremacy um, is the issue with the locals because I'm white. I know a lot of people that are white and we all have problems just like any other race of people on white supremacy as being a problem. And I just don't, you know, I'm sorry. Anywhere you go in the world, there's going to be, you know, different people of color, different, you know, whatever. And whites of color too. I mean, it might, people say it's not, but whites of color too. So, you know, I, am I not a person of color because I'm white? At the end of the day, my problem is, is that we are focusing too much on if you're, you know, Christian and all these different things is what creates white supremacy. And I don't agree one bit. I think we are all people. We need to treat people, you know, decently with respect. And I'm just thinking that government is not the place for it. If you guys can come up with a resolution that focuses on treating everybody with respect and not singling out somebody because they're white, then that would be great. And that's basically what my problem was with the whole kit and caboodle. <clears throat> Thanks, Steve. Um, so I'm going to open up it up to committee reports. If anyone has anything that they would like to report, um, 
Nikki, your hands up. Oh, Mercedes unmuted. Did you have something, Mercedes? Okay. Oh. I do, but if you have, go ahead first. I'm sorry, Mercedes, I didn't see your hand. Um, I just wanted to quickly um, let the committee and the community know uh, this Saturday at 10 a.m. in Mariposa, uh, the Southern Sierra Miwok Nation out of Mariposa, they've been fighting for federal recognition since 1982. Uh, they're having a march from the Mariposa Courthouse to the Mariposa, I believe it's the Mariposa Art Center. Um, and there's a group of us from Sonora who are going to support uh, their tribe in the march. And they're also having some education and cultural uh, things after the march. This is, um, if anyone was on the Native Voices program through Columbia College last year, uh, Uncle Bill Leonard is their tribal chairman. He spoke at that event. This is his tribe. Um, and so if anyone from Sonora wanted to go, um, I was going to leave uh, Sonora at eight. Maybe we can form a caravan um, and just go and show support um, in their fight for federal recognition. So you guys can find me on social media if anyone would like to message me on Facebook and, um, and maybe we can follow each other. Um, just wanted to let the community know that was happening in our neighbor camp. It would be really nice to support that. Yeah, thank you, Nikki, because yeah, they have been fighting for a long time for federal recognition. Yeah, and they are super well organized. Yeah. Um, so I would like to share that we have been continuing having uh, conversations at the library twice a month, uh, the second Wednesday of the month at 4 p.m. and the fourth Saturday of the month at 11 a.m. And um, I am really grateful for this intimate conversation. And I invite everyone that wants to come. Um, it is a, like Darren mentioned before, it is a wonderful way to engage in conversation in a respectful, respectful uh, civil way. And we can talk about all what is happening, we can talk about equity, we can talk about um, what is happening domestically or internationally, and how all that has ripple effect in our culture. And what we can do as a community to come together and to develop connections. Thank you. So Mercedes, the next one is this is um, Wednesday, the Wednesday after this coming Wednesday. Two, yeah, two Wednesday. second Wednesday and fourth Saturday. So the ninth, the ninth. and the twenty sixth. Looks like okay. I'm I'm putting we, it in my phone. We have to be careful about the Brown Act with us going oh, many of right. us and talking. So make sure that we kind of pre-plan that. So we're not five of us there because I think we can only have three. Right. Thank you. Uh, was that was that it, Darren? I thought you was that what yeah, yeah, I was I yeah. just wanted to make sure we did that because it'd be really cruddy to somebody show up and kind of have to sit outside. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not be included. <laughs> it, it is a good thing. I like going there. I actually find having conversations about it are, are very eye-opening. You know, we all want at the end of the day, pretty similar things. It's just how we get to those similar things is where we differ a lot of it. So it's, it's kind of crazy when you go there and it's not a political thing. It's let's build our community better so that we can have these civil discourses without the, without the fighting and the, the BS. It's, it's kind of cool. Just come check it out. Yeah, it sounds pretty healing too, which I think a lot of us could use right now. Okay, um, so if no one else has anything to say, um, thank you. Yay for, for technology that's working. Thank you, Chris. And um, thanks, for, thanks for coming, Elisa. Thank you. Okay, good night, everyone. Yeah, big okay. thanks to the city staff. Yes. Thank you. Thanks.
Big thanks. And oh, if I could just say one more thing by, by Sherilyn, um, if I could just say one more thing, just if you could just sort of go over the um, the definitions, just so I, I don't, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. But if there are some that you think we need that are important that we clarify between ourselves and also for the public, not that the public needs our definitions, but just so that they understand what we mean when we say those words. So anyhow. That's it. And I will put the um, all the notes from the last two meetings on the, the worksheet that you created, um, Mercedes, so that we can start with some sense of, how, of what it's beginning to look like. I think it's beginning to look pretty good. So yeah, I got like 10 cheat sheets it, going on here. No, it's it actually, I was trying to organize it today and it's it it I, you know, people couldn't make noise in my house or I couldn't figure it out. So um, um, I also, I should have mentioned this earlier, I'll be quick. And thank you, Melissa and Chris, for uh, letting us just stay a few minutes late. But I worked on uh, the, the, um, two, the couple uh, statements that I was going to work on, and those are finished. But since we're out of time, I'm going to email those to Melissa now so that they're in our packet for next week or for next meeting. So you guys can look at that before our next meeting. Would you... Uh email that to me as well, because I will make those changes in the, I'll, I'll yes. just make the changes in the document as well. Yes. Okay, thank you. And I have, I have a question. I have a question for you, Colette, before we go. So yesterday, I was not able to join and there was all these things happening. So I don't know if any decision was made. I hope not of taking anything away. Okay, so <clears throat> I will was, connect with you later. Yeah, that was discussed that, you know, and 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 just a sort of part of the reason that we spoke about common language tonight, um, because Nathan can't be here. Thank you. That's that's a commitment, I think, that we've all made and, and, and actually, um, yeah, it's a commitment. So you no. know, and that is another thing I really love about the work we are doing, that we have been so respectful of everyone right. to be inclusive and to wait. So thank you, everyone. Right. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Melissa.